Okay, so step one is you take some milk, one and a fourth cups, and you put it in a pot. Okay, Amber's got a really good and bad idea. Welcome to the vlog today. We are going to have lots of fun. I was reading my uh, scriptures today. Because. Oh, I threw away the whole bowl. You know what? I know. I'm grateful for hard times. Anytime something hard happens or if someone does something unkind towards me or my family, my default now is open the scriptures and read, and it is. So cool to see how it can change anxiety and fear and hurt to joy and and courage and faith and love. Like, it's amazing. The stuff I read today just like changed my perspective. I just feel so good. And so, um, and then I was like, what am I supposed to do today? I have a lot of good things to do today. One of the good things I'm gonna do today is one of my sweet friends her mom passed away, I'm gonna bring her dinner because when you lose someone that you love, and no one is ever ready to lose a mom. When you lose someone that you love, I know what that feels like, and I feel like you kind of just walk around with a foggy brain for like a long time. <laughs> you can't really function. Cooking and cleaning are things that you just don't really think about, and if someone doesn't come in and be a little angel to you, then sometimes you can really neglect yourself and it can get scary, so. I'm gonna bring her some dinner, and I'm gonna make some Texas Roadhouse imitation rolls. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. But before I do that, I'm gonna clean my kitchen because I don't like cooking for myself in a dirty kitchen, and I absolutely will not cook for other people in a dirty kitchen because that's just unkind and gross. So I'm gonna clean up this kitchen, sanitize things, and then we will get going, so. Okay, so step one is you take some milk, one and a fourth cups, and you put it in a pot and you heat it until it almost boils. It starts to get steamy, all of the like calcium or whatever the chunky stuff sticks to the bowl or the pot, and then you pour it in a bowl and you add a fourth of a cup of honey. And I mix it up until it melts, the honey melts. Then you take an egg at room temperature. Luckily I have fresh eggs from my chickens, the two that survived. Um, and you crack it into my bowl here that has some honey left in it. And I'm making a triple batch because I'm making dinner for us at the same time as my sweet friend. So I'm doing three eggs. Uh, the measurements I told you was just for one, so. Um, I'll stir this up. I'm not gonna add the eggs yet, I'm just gonna leave them here at room temperature. Then you take two and a fourth teaspoons of yeast, active dry yeast, and you're gonna wait until the milk is um, not like all the way cooled off. You want it really warm, but you don't want it to be hot because if it's hot and you pour the yeast inside of it, it's gonna kill the yeast. So it needs to be between like 90 and 101, and I think right now it's still a little too hot. So I'm gonna just keep waiting and stirring and kind of like letting it cool down a little bit. It's just milk and honey. And this recipe is, I just like, if you wanna get the recipe, it's just, I've used like five, they're all the same. If you Google, Texas Roadhouse roll copycat roll. It'll pop up, and they're all about the same. This one's from the the Cozy Cook. So I need to get four tablespoons of melted butter, but it's divided. So let me read the instructions. Three of the tablespoons of butter is going to go in here, which means I need nine. So I'm going to go melt nine tablespoons of butter. 
So uh, that's an entire stick and one tablespoon. Stick it in my bowl, pop it in the microwave. And just clean up as I go. My awesome man Zay came in and did the dishes. What a sweet boy. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna miss him so much. Um, and that helped me out a ton because I needed to get cooking. <laughs> well, I just made a rookie mistake. I pulled out the candy thermometer because I was like, I wonder what is the temperature? And I stuck it in there. And unfortunately, I was looking at the Celsius side for a second when I decided, oh yeah, I can pour the yeast in. And it was 120. <laughs> 125 when I poured the yeast in, so I might have just ruined it, but we'll see. Um, I don't want to dump out all this milk. It's almost four cups of milk. That's the one thing I'm sad about. If it doesn't get foamy in a few minutes, then I might have to start over. I'm actually so bummed. I don't think it's going to work. Don't do what I did. Oh, it's way too hot. Well, now you learned. If it was just for me, I probably would have just left it. But because I'm cooking for someone else and I really want it to be nice, I'm fixing it. <laughs> uh, maybe I should have just kept it and like, well then I'm like wasting more if it doesn't work because I'm just adding more ingredients into it. I made my choice and living with it. Okay, there is another three and a fourth cups of milk. While I'm waiting for the milk to chill, I put it in the fridge <laughs> just to like help it along. That doesn't happen again. Better not forget about it. I measured out the flour that I'm gonna need and I have the butter again and the yeast and the eggs and the honey. Oh, the honey's over here. <laughs> I still need to, to melt this and I can't do it in this little thing because it's metal but We'll get it going. I stuck it on some ice because I thought maybe that would even be faster. Have the thermometer in there now. It's at 125. That's what it was at before when I put it in. So then I'll just read you really fast the ingredient list. One and a fourth cups milk, one and a fourth cups active yeast, dry active yeast, one fourth cup honey, four tablespoons melted butter divided, so three tablespoons in with it, one large egg at room temperature, one teaspoon salt, and four cups of bread flour or alcohol flour. And I've already shown you the steps now. So you heat up the milk, you cool down the milk to 90 degrees, dump in the yeast, stir it up till it's foamy, wait five minutes, and, and the honey, the honey and the yeast at the same time, I think. And then you, once that's all foamy and happy, then you add in the eggs and the butter and the salt, and you mix all that up, and then you add in like a third of the flour mix all that up and then you slowly add the flour in until it makes like a dough ball. Then you take it out and knead it a couple times, spray the inside of your bowl with some non-cook, non-stick cooking spray, put the dough ball in there, cover it with saran wrap and wait for an hour and a half and when you come back it's like huge, doubled in size, big and fluffy. You take that sucker out, put it on the countertop, roll it out really like half inch thick fold it in half and then you cut it. I do like a big square and then I cut it into 24 squares and then you put those on the baking sheet and you bake them and that's how you get the yummy Texas Roadhouse rolls. It's not super hard. It does take four hours. So if you're like, oh, I just wanna whip those up really quick. You need to, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing in there but I just heard some acting voice from Davey. Okay, the ice was a good idea. It cooled it off a lot faster. Now when I put my finger in it, <laughs> I just washed my hands, don't worry. It is like touching someone's skin. Like it's very comfortable temperature. So now we're putting the honey in. All right, these other three ingredients, the eggs and the butter and the salt, they all go in next after five minutes has gone by. So I'm just gonna mix all of those into one bowl so I can do these dishes. <laughs>
I like to cover it with a towel just to keep the warmth in. It helps it to rise a little bit better. Okay, now I'm making the rub for the pork tenderloin. I've mixed a half of a cup of apple juice, a fourth of a cup of thin, or, uh, brown sugar, and three tablespoons of the Traeger pork rub. And now I'm gonna add, oh, and I said three tablespoons of warm honey. And I'm gonna do fresh thyme and black pepper, okay? Here's my fresh thyme. I need two tablespoons, that's probably one. Two, we rinse it. Oh, it smells so good. Okay. By the way, this can opener off Amazon, I think you could just pull it off. Pull it off. It's done all the way around. I didn't think it worked the first yeah, time. It doesn't work. Wait, stop. It's not open. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Hold on. You gotta just. Maybe it didn't go around all the way. Every put it on wrong. No, it didn't. Well, it did. Oh. See? Oh, it just didn't finish. That's what it was doing. It's finished, Dad. It's finished. Turn it off. You have to turn it off. Um, I just want to open the doors for It's fine. Or open the screen for me. Perfect. Okay, so I forgot to film this part, but I just put all of that mixture on top of it, rubbed it all around, saran wrapped it, put it in the fridge for an hour. It's two o'clock. I think I'll throw it on the grill at three. It cooks for one and a half to two hours. And my plan is, I don't know exactly when my friend's going to need dinner, so she's going to text me when she gets home. And then, if it's not quite cooked yet, the glory about this meal is that if it's all together, it's really hard to overcook because it takes a long time to cook when it's a really big piece of meat. But if she's like, oh, I'm home and it's not quite done yet, it's so easy to just slice up and put on the grill and let the internal temperature get to 145 and then you're done. So, And so it will be warm whenever it's time to bring it over to her. So that's why I did this meal. And the rolls, um, I need to set a timer for those, but they're road, Texas Roadhouse rolls. Yeah, and I did a triple batch, so there'll be plenty for us to have too. All right, so that's dinner. And then also I'm gonna slice up some yellow zucchini and just have that ready to grill. When she says she's home, I'll throw it on because that only takes like two to five minutes to grill. Okay, Amber's got a really good and bad idea. The dogs are pulling her on that and she's got a treat out to make them chase it. Uh oh. Okay, We have e-bikes, you know, that are... This is more modern. This is more efficient. Okay, okay. Okay. Go get it. Go fetch. <laughs> Not <laughs> interested. Put it closer to the mouth. <laughs> Go get it. Go get a treat. Go run. You want a treat? Some things happen in the movies, then they don't happen in real life. <laughs> Go. Yeah. Go on. Put it Go closer on. to them. How about I get the treat? And oh, yeah. Run with it. And then just to get them started. Okay. Okay, here's the test to see if it works. What works? The food. Oh. Okay. okay. I, I just dog sled worked. Dog sled worked. Okay, let's see it. Okay, let's see. Go taste it, Annika. It feels, I feel like it needs like some sauce. Well, hello there. I, uh, oh, I just said, ah, sorry. Let's start over. Someone said that they didn't think that I could speak English without doing filler words. I'm April can speak English without doing filler words. She's doing it right now. You're welcome. See, that was no filler word. I mowed the lawn today with my robot lawnmower that I'll be reviewing soon. Watch for that. No. I love that thing. April says no. No, no, I'm saying Frank's trying to eat these pills. No. Whole line of medication for EB's arthritis. 
We're gonna end the vlog now. Thanks for watching. Find good in everything. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. All right, guys, got the new Hummer. Hi. Peace. Wow.